Dr. Jean Jose, Department of Radiology, University of Miami, Medical Director of the Lennar Foundation Medical Center. We're here to introduce you to the fundamentals of musculoskeletal ultrasound imaging. I'm joined by Louis Payro, ultrasound supervisor for the Lennar Foundation Medical Center, and Nikhil Patel, medical student at the University of Miami School of Medicine, that will serve as our Hey everyone, this is Richard Wang, one of the radiology residents, and today I'll be going over a basic MSK ultrasound evaluation of the knee. I'll quickly go over some MSK ultrasound basics and then move on to anatomy and technique, evaluating the anterior, medial, lateral, and posterior knee, and then pathology examples, and finally a video demonstration. This is for educational purposes only. I have no financial disclosures. Long and short axis should be used to describe the orientation of tendons, ligaments, muscles, and nerves. As for the structures themselves, tendons and ligaments both have an echogenic fibrillar pattern. While muscles are hypochoic with an echogenic fibroadipose septae, nerves have a fasciculated appearance. These are the main transducers that we use in MSK ultrasound. For evaluation of the knee, you want to use the middle high frequency linear transducer. Regarding anisotropy artifact, you want the sound beams from the probe to be directly perpendicular to the tendons and ligaments. The main structures to look at are the quadriceps tendon and the patellar tendon. Position the knee so that it is slightly flexed to stretch the extensor mechanism. The quadriceps tendon is four muscles forming three layers. The rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, the vastus medialis, and the vastus intermedius muscles forming the superficial, intermediate, and deep layers. At the top middle image, the superficial layer, labeled number one, comes from the rectus femoris. The intermediate layer, labeled number two, is from both the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis. The deep layer, labeled number three, is from the vastus intermedius. The top rightmost image shows a long axis view of the distal third of the quadriceps tendon. The asterisk denotes the suprapatellar synovial recess. Number one denotes the suprapatellar fat pad. Number two denotes the prefemoral fat pad. And the empty arrows are the quadriceps tendon. At the middle set of images, the empty arrowheads show the patellar tendon from the patella to the tibial tuberosity. The arrow is the deep infrapatellar bursa, and it is normal to have some mild distension of the bursa here. Hoffa's fat pad is labeled as HFP. For evaluation of the medial knee, you want to rotate the leg externally while maintaining 20 to 30 degrees of knee flexion. The main structures are the MCL and the pes and serinus complex. The medial meniscus can sometimes be evaluated as well, but it is more difficult due to how deep the structure is. The middle images show the empty arrows pointing at the MCL, the empty and white arrowheads are the superficial and deep layers of the MCL, and the asterisk is the medial meniscus. If you rotate the transducer forward, you can see the pes anserinus complex, labeled by the white arrows on the bottom right image. For the lateral knee, rotate the patient's leg internally while maintaining 20 to 30 degrees of knee flexion. Follow the iliotubule band on its long axis down to reach Gerdy's tubercle. At the top right images, the arrowheads are the iliotubule band. The asterisk is Gerdy's tubercle. LFC stands for lateral femoral condyle. Then place the lower edge of the probe on the peroneal head and rotate its upper edge anteriorly until the lateral collateral ligament appears as elongated as possible in the ultrasound image. Deep to the proximal part of the lateral collateral ligament, you can see the popliteal tendon. It's imaged in its bony groove shown by the empty arrow on the bottom right image. Arrowheads show the lateral collateral ligament. The asterisk shows the lateral meniscus. Have the patient prone with the knee extended for evaluation of the posterior knee. Check the semimembranosus and the gastrocnemius recess between the medial head of the gastroc, where the tendon is denoted by the asterisk at the left image and the semimembranosus tendon is denoted by the star. At the popliteal fossa, on the top right images, you can examine the popliteal artery and the vein as well as the tibial nerve. The artery is A, the vein is V, 
The curved arrow is the tibial nerve. At the bottom right, you can sometimes see part of the posterior cruciate ligament. Here is a small, simple joint effusion denoted by E at the suprapatellar recess between the suprapatellar fat pad and the prefemoral fat pad. Here is some complex fluid at the prepatellar bursa. This is a complex Baker cyst denoted by the star. Make sure and try to show the neck between the Baker cyst and the joint. The arrow is pointing at anisotropy of the semimembranosus tendon. This is a full thickness quadriceps tendon tear. The longitudinal view shows a hypochoic defect between the proximal and distal stumps of the quadriceps tendon. This is a longitudinal color Doppler view of the patellar tendon, which shows thickening, heterogeneity, and hyperemia of the proximal patellar tendon. This is a long axis color Doppler view of the MCL, where you can see thickening, increased vascularity, and hypoechogenicity denoted by the arrowheads, consistent with a sprain. This is a patellar fracture. The longitudinal ultrasound image shows the anterior patella with a focal cortical defect. Ultrasound isn't usually great for looking at the menisci, but here you can see on the left image a linear hypochoic defect at the lateral meniscus consistent with a tear. The right image is a more posterior view with color Doppler and you can see an associated perimeniscal cyst. Okay, um, we're also going to use the 18 uh, linear, we said 18L6, transducer. Um, so we're going to start off in long axis. We're going to look right above uh, the, um, the patella. We're going to start off with a quad uh, tendon evaluation. Long axis, short axis. From here we can also go uh, patellar tendon. Again, long axis, and then short axis from superior to, to inferior. Then, either medial or lateral, let's say we go medial. So from the medial aspect, we can look at the joint line, we can look at uh, uh, the medial meniscus. Um, this is in long axis. If we go a little bit more distal, we can look at the pes anterior. We also like to look at that in long axis. You could also evaluate that in short axis. Uh, lateral side of the knee, uh, we look at the lateral joint line, we look at the lateral meniscus. Uh, long axis, we can also see it in short axis. While we're doing all this evaluation, we're also looking for effusions. Then I'd like to finish off with posterior. We go, we go short axis, look at the popliteal fossa, so we look at for a Baker cyst, short axis, long axis, and while we're there, we evaluate, make sure there isn't a, a, a popliteal vein. Uh, clot, so we also look for, for DVT while we're there in short and long axis.